The problem I always have with doing video responses is that I forget that I, I have to do them. So I'll see a video that I want to respond to and then I'll go about my life for a couple of days and then whoosh, it's gone. But I wanted to take this time now because I just saw your latest video, Dead Dog X. I wanted to say hi and that I really enjoy your videos and I wanted to try to offer my own thoughts about uh, being genderqueer. Now, I am not a a person that self identifies as self identifies I'm not a person that self identifies as genderqueer. Um I suppose I identify more as feminine. Um yeah. But I I I I'm surprised that uh it sounds like you are entering this new world of kind of genderqueerism. Yeah, it surprises me that you um, say that you this is a new space for you because it comes to you so naturally, uh, and it seems like you you're just really enjoying yourself, and I'm I'm really glad that you are compelled to share it with people because I think that sharing experiences is one of the greatest things that we can do as humans. Um, so that said, I always had kind of um. Not uncomfortableness, but like a agnosticism. I know that agnostic means it's specifically talking about God, but I've always been kind of agnostic toward the idea of going to a genderqueer space for myself. Um, in fact, I think that when I was early, very, very early, just starting on my transition, and you know, I was I was at the phase where I was I had just kind of admitted things to myself, and I was still trying to find a lot of answers and do a lot of searching and this whole idea of going from man to woman was awfully scary to me because I I felt like it was gonna be inevitable that I would come across as genderqueer that I would come across as maybe a man that was trying to be a woman or as someone that people couldn't quite tell what I was at first and I think that I was afraid of how that could make people uncomfortable with me. Um, another part of that is that I've always been a person that really wanted to be liked by people and I um, I just, th the, the very thought of having somebody that I didn't even know kind of be confused by me or be offended by me for for crossing the gender line it was um it was not a nice nice feeling to think about so i think that i always had it in my head like my ideal transition once i was you know a year into things I always had it in my head that I was just going to like flip the coin one day and that I would start on hormones and gradually become more and more feminine as a man and then I would just one day go to work full time just yeah I would go full time and just like suddenly I would just switch suddenly from man to woman and as as I got as as reality unfolded, it became clear that that was probably not going to happen because I was having a really hard time starting hormones um, and I kind of felt like I, I needed to move forward like this. I felt this pressure to go full time, like coming from inside of me, like I, I knew that, that I needed it. Um, and so I just... I eventually had to give up this romantic idea that I was just going to flip a switch and not not make anybody uncomfortable or not come across gender queer or you know I was afraid to show my failure in my attempts to express my feminine side and you know that continued even into some months on hormones. So it wasn't until, you know, a couple of 
couple, three, four months that I really became comfortable with myself and I felt like I was passing all the time and then suddenly passing became not as important to me because I was more comfortable with who I was and I was more confident in how I was perceived. And as, as that built up inside of me, I could really feel like I know who I am. And so therefore, the opinions of people that I don't know, that are just kind of out in the world, they don't really matter as much. And then I started to wonder, I don't know, I, I think that there might have been a couple of times, although I can't remember any specific days, that I did make some people uncomfortable with the way I presented myself. Um, and I, 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 I seem to remember kind of taking some pleasure in that. And that seemed like, oh, I made that person uncomfortable. <laughs> and uh, and then I, I kind of sat back and, and tried to think again about people that set out to be genderqueer because they like to make people uncomfortable. Maybe. Maybe that's the point of, of, of why they do it. Uh, and in fact, I've met some people that, that, yeah, I like to make people, I like to push people's buttons. I like to... I like to make them confused. I like to, to incite that response in them. I like them to react to me that way. Um, and so thinking about this kind of after having some experiences in my transition, I thought was really interesting. Although I still didn't feel like it was where I wanted to be. So <laughs> the last thing that I'll share is that I think the last time that I actually presented genderqueer was at Halloween. So Halloween 2008, I was not full-time, I was not on hormones, I didn't even really have my shit together that well. And I went to a Halloween party as Dr. Girlfriend. So, uh, if you don't know who Dr. Girlfriend is, she's a biological female character in the tar cartoon show The Venture Brothers, but she has a really deep voice like this. She's always going, oh, monarch, which is her boyfriend, and he's a super villain. And so I was walking around in this, like, white Jackie O nurse dress with, like, a little hat and these gloves and all pretty, like, Hey, darling, how's it going? And, uh, and so that was really, that was really funny. Um, and I think everyone had a good time that night. Um, but then 2009, this most recent Halloween, I actually, I went to, um, another party as as a male character. So I'm a big gamer, and there's this character that I really like from these fighting games that I play, and his name is Freeman, and he's kind of a gothic serial killer type. Really, really fucked up. And this is a character that I'd wanted to be for Halloween for years, um, even before I thought about transitioning. Um, but I just had never had before, so... In 2009, even after I had been full-time for six months as a woman, I decided I'm going to be Freeman for Halloween. So I'll see if I can find a picture of Freeman and put it up right here. Um, but basically, I just made my hair really messy and long, and I pulled it down long and kind of made it strangly, strandly, and I, um, I did really, really black, dark circles for both of my eyes. Oh, and I took this, like, SPF 75 sunscreen, 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 and put it all over my face, um, kind of heavy, so, like, I was really pale, and had these really dark eyes, and I just kind of, like, sunken, I tried to, like, make myself look like sunken jawbones and stuff, and I wore a binder, I wore a binder that FTMs wear, and, like, it didn't hide my breasts, like, it didn't completely conceal them, and I actually found it really difficult to pass as a guy that night, and I felt like I really didn't know how I was being perceived, because I was speaking in a different character voice, I was, I was kind of more speaking like this all night, and just, what can I, get? I was bartending, so I was like, can I get you a beer? You know, just really, like, weird and stuff, so, um, I, I guess those are my forays into the realm of genderqueer, and I think that it's cool that we share those experiences, and um, I think that I'm a little bit braver for having, for having been through those experiences, and, you know, 
I had great fun, and I think that's what's that's what makes life worth living is some fun. So I hope you are well, and I hope all everyone else watching is well, and I will see you next time.